And what they found was that subjects that were offering feedback and the ones that were receiving feedback were equally anxious that the heart rates of the participants jumped as much as 50% during these feedback conversations. So there's this feeling of anxiety that we're getting whenever we're going into these conversations and it doesn't matter if you're giving or getting the feedback. Hello and welcome to Growing Through It, your go-to podcast for real leadership stories. I'm your host, Jen Arnold. In every episode, you'll hear straight talk from leaders who face their own challenges. We'll dive into those whoops moments and the insights that followed. This podcast is about the lessons that refine us, share to help you confidently lead in your own style. Whether you're looking to steer your team towards success or just seeking a spark of inspiration, you're in the right place. Let's grow through it together. Hey there, and welcome to the Growing Through It podcast. I'm your host, Jen Arnold, and today I want to talk about something that every leader needs to know how to do well, and that is giving feedback. So last week I did a small group workshop that was free, and it was called The Art and Science of Meaningful Feedback. And so I want to do a part one and then a part two because it's it's an hour's worth, and I think that's a little bit heavy. Um, but I want to talk about two things, the science behind it and why traditional feedback methods create these feelings of threat. And two, I want to walk you through a framework that I created to help you give more meaningful feedback in a way that does not cause this threat response in the people you're giving it to. So those are the two things I want to talk about today, but I want you to think about your own experience So I'm sure you've been given feedback in your life, in your work life. And I want you to think about what unhelpful feedback has looked like for you. Now, for me, and I've told my story before in a past podcast, it was when my boss, who didn't really know me that that well, because I had a, a, I had a boss switch, but gave me a lot of feedback all at once when I couldn't do anything about it. So It was saved up till the very end. And then it was like, oh, sorry, this isn't going to work anymore. And first of all, I want to talk about what happens in our brains, in our bodies, really, our our brains and our bodies. But let's start with our bodies. And they did a study where they monitored participants' heart rates during feedback conversations. And these were people who didn't know each other. They pretty much had, they got, paired with someone they didn't know. And they were told that they had to role play. When they got into the room together, they basically had to negotiate with each other. And then when those negotiations were finished, each side had to give feedback about his or her like opponent's performance, right? So if you and I are sitting in a room together we don't know each other. We're going to go in there. We're going to have to negotiate. Then I'm going to have to tell you some feedback. And what they found was that subjects that were offering feedback and the ones that were receiving feedback were equally anxious. That the heart rates of the participants jumped as much as 50% during these feedback conversations. So there's this feeling of anxiety that we're getting whenever we're going into these conversations, and it doesn't matter if you're giving or getting the feedback. And I want you to consider what that does for our brains. If our heart rates are elevated, then we're getting in that flight, fight, or freeze state. We are not being open-minded. We're not being curious. We're probably judging more. And so that's the first thing to realize is that before we go into these conversations to do something that is going to calm us a little bit and or admit that this is makes you nervous, right? So I think the take home message here is that these conversations, these feedback conversations are anxiety producing. And we can point to social neuroscience to help us understand this. Our brains are wired in this organizing principle of minimizing threat and maximizing reward. 
And this goes towards social behavior. So anytime we're social in groups, we want to minimize the threat and maximize the reward. It is really designed to help people stay alive by quickly and easily remembering what is good and bad in the environment. And so when you think about feedback, it feels painful, it feels threatening, and it feels like something we really want to avoid. So a lot of us avoid giving it. And it's also one of those things, most feedback is going to be constructive. So that's showing maybe and telling and asking for the things that you're not as good at. And that can feel threatening. So there's a lot of threats that feedback can bring. And one of the models I use a lot in my training is called the SCARF model. S-C-A-R-F, SCARF, like the you know, thing you put around your neck in the winter time. And this was developed by the Neuroleadership Institute. And I'm going to walk you through it because I think it's really important to understand that it's not just w- one type of threat that may be happening, but it could be several types of threats uh, whenever you are giving feedback or getting it. So put in your mind the last time you received unhelpful feedback when you're like, Meh, thanks, it wasn't very helpful. In fact, it just made me mad. Think about that. And then I want you to, as I go through each of these domains, think about where you felt a little threatened. All right. So the first one is status. And when you think about it, if you're a leader and you're giving your team feedback, that is already a difference in status, if you will. Um, A status threat can occur if you're giving advice or instructions or simply suggesting someone is slightly ineffective at a task aka feedback. So a piece of status is also feeling respected and valued. So when someone gave you that unhelpful feedback, did you feel respected and valued? If not, or if they were implying that you were just ineffective at your your job, then your status threat may be triggered. The next one is certainty, and it is knowing what to expect. And here's what I find a lot of times is that leaders will get super frustrated with their team, but their team didn't even know what to expect. You know, were you expected to read our leaders' minds, the expectations weren't set, or maybe the expectations shifted on us and we weren't told. Uh, Also knowing what to expect from a feedback conversation. Like, how do you approach feedback? Is it the same all the time? Uh, do you build it up? And you know, and like your team never knows when it's coming, but you know it's coming sometimes. So there are, they're always on the lookout. That certainty. All right. So think about that unhelpful feedback. Did you know what to expect? Did you know what to expect in the feedback conversation? Why you're even having the feedback conversation? Like, did you know your expectations and then what to do about it? So the feedback was given, then what? All right, the third domain is autonomy, having choices and control. We're adults. We like having control over our lives. Shocker. And sometimes feedback is given in a way to where you have no say in it. You're just given the feedback. There's no questions. There's no, hey, why do you think that is? Or, hey, can you help me understand? It's just, hey, you suck at this. See you later. No one likes that feeling. So again, with that unhelpful feedback, did you have choices in the matter? Did you have control? I know in my feedback conversation, I had literally like no control. It was, here's what's going to happen. And then I took my autonomy in my own hands, but that's the other podcast. The fourth domain is relatedness, and that's feeling safe and connected to others. If your people don't trust you, if you can't show them that you're doing it in your their best interest, right? It's not about you. It's about helping them and it's about helping the company and feeling safe where they can open up the conversation. Then you can trigger that relatedness domain. And then finally, fairness, that feedback is fair and balanced, right? It's not generalizations. It's not you always do this. It's, hey, I've noticed that right? So everyone's got the same rules, everyone's got the same playbook, and it's fair. So these are the threats that can come up a lot whenever feedback is happening. So keeping these in mind, these SCARF threats, 
How can you then flip those around and give feedback in a way that lowers the threat response? And so I put together a framework and it's called IDEA, I-D-E-A, that I'll walk you through in a minute. But before we even get to that IDEA framework on giving the feedback, I want you to answer this question. If you have feedback you want to give to someone, I want you to answer the question, why? Why does it need to be said? Why does that person need to know? And if it's not for that person's own benefit, if it's not for a repair in a relationship that you need, or it's going to help the company, it may not need to be said. So making sure you can answer that question. Now on to the idea framework. I will walk through my framework with an example I had. Uh, I have a team of contractors, so I have no employees. I just have contractors. And one of my contractors who I love, really, really appreciate all that they give and want to keep that relationship tightly intact because she's truly indispensable. Um, But one thing was happening is she would go work on projects and I'd have no idea when the bill was coming. So maybe three months without a bill and then all of a sudden I get this really giant bill and I wasn't expecting it. Had no frame of reference for project time or anything like that. And so what I did was walk through this framework. So let me use that example walking through this framework. So it starts with I. Identify the specific behavior you're addressing. You're addressing the issue, not the person. So I heard Seth Godin say this and I loved it. It's criticize the work, not the worker. It's not about the person. So in this situation, my contractor, the specific behavior was not getting billed in a timely manner or not knowing the time frame in which I would get billed. That was the behavior. The next piece to the idea framework is describe. Describe the impact. And that impact can be the impact to them, the impact to you, the impact to the company, right? So the impact for me was I wasn't able to predict and it impacted my cash flow. It's just not, it's not knowing. And so that was the impact. It was the uncertainty for me that I didn't like, um, That was the, that was the describe the impact. The third one is inquire and asking them, this is where the autonomy piece comes in. What are your thoughts on the situation? So in my contractor situation is, Hey, what are some thoughts on how this can be done in a different way that she probably hates to invoice, but I need it more frequently. So I could just throw an idea out to her. How can you do something that works for you, but then still gets at what I need? That's inquire, inquire with an E. And I had to look it up to make sure it fed my framework. It's an E. <laughs> so, the last piece is action. It's again, is coming to that certainty piece. What's next and what do you want them to do? So let's just say in the situation of my contractor, well, if she gives me her thoughts on the situation, well, yeah, I could, I could invoice you every month month. So then I would just say, all right, well, I would love being invoiced every month. How about we start next month on the 15th? And then you can even say, we can come back to this next quarter, see if it's working for you and it's working for me. All right. So it's doing something with the feedback. Um, Some of the worst feedback I've given is kind of like you're lobbing a bomb over the fence. You're like, here's all the feedback. And then you just walk away, leaving them to deal with the situation. So the framework is, let me repeat it. And I'll put this in the show notes as well. Identifying the specific behavior you're addressing, the work, not the worker. Describe the impact. What is this this behavior? What's the impact to that person, to you, to the company? Inquire giving them some autonomy in the situation. What are their thoughts on the situation? Because you're only seeing it from your lens. You need to see from their lens. And then action. What's next? What do you want them to do? 
Now you can use this framework for positive feedback as well. Like this is one of those things. It doesn't have to be all constructive. If you have something really good to say about somebody, God, they want to know the specifics. They want to see how they're helping people. They want to say, oh, did you even realize you were doing this great thing? And then the action would be, how can you leverage it again in in more situations? So let me know if this was helpful. And I do these trainings with organizations. I do these trainings with leaders. So if you are a leader who wants to get better at giving feedback, let me know. And uh, I can go through this with you or I can go through it with your team. All right. Now for the next solo episode, I'm going to talk about asking for meaningful feedback. It felt like the third part was too much to fit into this, what I try to make as a short podcast episode. So the next time I'm doing solo episode, it will be asking for meaningful feedback. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time. As always, thank you so much for listening to the Growing Through It podcast. Thank you for joining us on Growing Through It. I'm Jen Arnold, and it's been a pleasure sharing this time with you. If today's story sparked something in you, don't keep it to yourself. Subscribe to our podcast, leave a review, and share it with your fellow leaders. And remember, each episode comes with a nugget of wisdom that we expand on in our newsletter. So if you're eager to put these insights into action, head over to our website at growthsignals.co and sign up for exclusive content that'll give you an edge in your leadership journey. Keep growing and I'll connect with you again soon in our next episode. Until then, take the lessons learned and lead authentically.